Using a tarp for your shelter is such a great way to change things up, but also such a unique way to experience an overnight in the backcountry. Probably the thing that holds you back the most is that feeling that you might not be actually super well protected. So today I'm gonna share with you three new tarp shelters to me, give you my first impression of how it would feel to sleep under there so that you can maybe take those out on your next camping trip. For the Adirondack shelter, the first thing you're gonna have to do is set up a really strong ridge line. The height of the ridge line matters a lot. For me, I have a 10 by 10 tarp and I'm 5'10 and what I found is about shoulder height to be the perfect height to set up. So on one side, I'll do a classic Siberian hitch. Once I have a fixed anchor on one tree, on the other tree, I'm gonna set up a trucker's hitch with an auto locking mechanism. Next step, I'm gonna set up two Prusik knots on my ridge line. Now, because my Prusik knots are the same diameter as my ridge line, what I have to do is a triple Prusik knot. If you have no idea about all the knots that I'm talking about, go check out my knot video that I put up there. I'll also link it at the end of this video so you can go and refer to it because in this video, I'm just doing the shelters. The next thing we're gonna have to do is set up the tarp over top of the ridge line. And what you wanna find is a corner of your tarp like this, fold the corner of the tarp over the top of the ridge line. So this is the corner of my tarp. And what I wanna do is I wanna go to the second attachment and find my Prusik knot here. And I'm gonna use a toggle to secure the tarp to the ridge line like this. Go to the other side and do the same thing. So corner, first loop, second loop. Now, adjust your tarp as taut as possible on either end. For the next step, what we'll do is we'll come around to the back. We're gonna grab the second attachment to the corner again, and we're gonna go right backwards and pull taut and peg the back of the tarp down to the ground. Repeat on the other side. Now we're gonna come around to the corners and we're gonna take the corner of the tarp and we're gonna peg it down and make our walls. Repeat the process on the other side, obviously. And then to create extra space, what you can also do is guy out the middle of the tarp and use a trekking pole to really create an, an immense amount of space in that shelter. So I'm simply gonna do lark's head knot to the tarp, lark's head knot on the, on the trekking pole and guy it out and use a taut line hitch to really give it as much tension as I need. For this part of the tarp, uh, to be honest, you can guy it out, attach it to a tree, set yourself up with a really nice awning if you want to. For the purpose of this video, I'll just fold it over like that. My first impression of the Adirondack shelter is I really, really like it. It's a very roomy one-person shelter. You're, you can really tuck in at the back really well to, to make sure that you're nice and protected if ever it rains. There's plenty of room for you to have your gear. You have a little bit of a ground sheet to, to put some of your gear back here. It's also really nice and tall so that I can sit up really comfortably and not have to worry about my head having to be crotching or anything like that. And I can enjoy a really nice fire in front of my shelter in a way that would make me feel actually really comfortable, really cozy, and really secure. Of course, like any any three-sided shelter or like any tarp shelter that you'll ever do, making sure that you pick the proper orientation for the wind is gonna be key. If the wind is coming right at me from here like it is right now, it'll be a very cold night. But if I was to turn it around, make sure the wind hits me from the back, I would do just fine. For the plow shelter now, our second shelter we're gonna be testing out today. The first thing we need to do is fix a rope to the corner of our tarp. I'm using a lark's head knot right now because it's simple and fast. And then we're gonna tie the other side of the rope as high as we can on a tree which will act as our anchor. But I'm gonna go and use an adjustable knot, knot so I can adjust that and I'm gonna do a taut line hitch to the tree to anchor myself in. Now once your tarp is anchored to the tree, you're gonna take the opposite corner and you're gonna stake it out as far back as possible. Then you take the other corners and then you fan them out, you stake them out to the ground and we're almost done. For a little extra room inside the shelter, I'm gonna tie a ridge line to the middle loop 
to open it up like we did with the Adirondack shelter. And there you have it, the plow shelter. My first impression of this shelter is I feel extremely protected and it is extremely roomy in here. It's very impressive how much room I have in here. I have tons of room for my gear at the back. I could easily sleep too if we went on, like, look at this. If you go like that, if you set yourself up side by side like this, if you set yourself up side by side like this, you could easily sleep too in this shelter and be very protected. I mean, like, this is nice and low at the front. You get to really direct the opening of the shelter the way that, that is useful for you. And right now it's positioned perfectly and the wind is just blowing right over here. And uh, even if you were two, you'd still have some room for your gear. This is a really, really interesting shelter I've seen many times online, but never got, gotten around to using it. And I'm really looking forward to it because you just feel really protected. Before I get into the next shelter, you might notice that I'm actually not even wearing the same clothes as the last two shelters. That's because I'm shooting this two weeks apart. I ran out of time last time, so here we are today. For the third shelter, it's a shelter that I haven't seen many times online. Uh, I didn't come up with it. I saw another YouTuber make that shelter and I was absolutely very intrigued with it. So I'll leave his shout out here. I'm sorry, I can't remember uh, top of my head right now his name, but I'll put it at the bottom of the screen. It's the Ganya Shelter and this shelter may very well be my new favorite tarp shelter. For all these shelters, by the way, I'm using a 10 by 10 tarp. The one I'm using myself is the Guide Tarp from AquaQuest. I love this tarp, great tarp. If you're looking for it, link in the description below. But we're gonna take the corner of the tarp and we're gonna take one side of the square of the tarp and we're gonna essentially peg both corners as taut as possible as our first step. We're gonna move to the front end of it here and we're gonna take the middle attachment at this end and we're gonna peg it. And this is gonna create a triangle that's gonna essentially act as a ground sheet for us. Then take the end of the tarp, the other corner, match it to this corner here and probably move up a foot and a half, I would say here, and then peg this down like that. Moving right along, we're gonna start from the corner and we're gonna grab the second attachment. You can either use a trekking pole, I have mine set at 145 centimeters, or you can use a branch and we're gonna essentially use this as a pole to raise up the tarp. I'm gonna attach a guy line here. And then I'm gonna do a lark's head knot on the pole. I'm gonna go and peg it to the ground with an adjustable knot to really give me the flexibility of how taut I want this to be. And I'm gonna use a taut line hitch. We're gonna repeat a very similar process on the second loop from that corner here. And we're gonna use a pole and this one I have it set at 115 centimeters. What I have found to work the best for the, for the guy lines here is if you fan them out to the side as much as possible, it keeps the top of the tarp a little tauter and gives you a bit more headroom. And as per usual, if you wanna have more room in your tarp shelter, you take the tab at the back and you pull it out and I happen to have a fence here, but if you had a tree, you could do the same thing. You just tie it to the back and it really opens up the inside of the shelter for you. And for the last piece here, we've got the awning of the shelter that I'm just gonna peg down in front of us. Um, but you could tie this up to a tree nice and high to even give you more room. The Ganya tarp shelter. I mean, come on. Look at this thing. It is such a neat one person shelter where you feel extremely protected. You don't need any trees to set this up. All you need is two poles, some pegs. You only need a very small footprint of flat ground and you can make yourself essentially a really a nice little tent. You have plenty of room for some of your gear back here. You have a little bit of a ground sheet. If you lay down, you've got plenty of room, head space, at the back here. And the fact that there's an awning here, you can easily cook with your camp stove underneath here if it's pouring rain outside. You do have to be careful for your tarp. But other than that, you can easily just hang out in your shelter without feeling like you're in a, tar a tent. This shelter has one of the biggest power move I've ever seen because, well, let me show you. Look what you can do here. You take the corner and you just stake it out. <laughs> Come on, now you've got a tent. 
So if at the end of the night you just want a close shop, you essentially now have a tent with, <laughs> with a ground sheet and room for some of your gear, easily for some of your gear on both sides, and you are extremely protected and you feel super, super safe in this shelter. If you've never camped in a tarp shelter before, this is the shelter I would recommend as a startup because you have best of both worlds. If you have a nice night out, you wanna sleep with the awning up, there's no, not too much wind, you wanna be able to experience what it is to kinda of sleep under the stars under a shelter, you've got that. If, it tur if the weather turns on you, the wind's not good, uh, it's raining, you can just take the awning, put it down, and now you've got a tent. I mean, it doesn't get better than this. All you're missing is a little mesh here and you're good to go. This is a tarp shelter that I'm super excited about to try on my next trips because it's the best of both worlds. Hanging out by the fire underneath your tarp easily when you're underneath the awning with the awning up. And then at the end of the night, just closing shop if it gets too bad and now you're super protected. Throughout this entire video I've mentioned many different kinds of knots and if you're not familiar with them I'll leave a link right up here. Go check out this video and I will see you as always in the next video. Peace!